Hi everyone. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to learn about dependence, dependency injection, environment setup, and um, config settings. So we already learned about how this um, uh, uh, this project structure looks like in MVC six. So let's go ahead and open the startup MVC six. Um, so the really the dependent injection if some of you don't know what is dependent injection is the dependent injection actually is called loosely coupled solution where we can keep um, all the implementation in a separate DLL and interface in a separate DLL and so we can uh, connect both in a one project like this startup project uh, in this MVC app and then uh, we can initiate the uh, we can call the implemented method in this project so the idea is we keep all all separately and also we initiate only once and then we can reuse the same uh, object uh, in a, a different controller so we don't need to call um, customer uh, CS equal to new customer in every controller page instead we can call uh, injected um, uh, injector method uh, class name and dot uh, customer name customer method um, so really helpful when you consider about um, big project you want to separate other things and so nowadays everybody want to do the independent injection to keep the uh, project very loosely coupled so everybody can everyone can work on it work on it at the same time so one person can work on the implementation another person work on the uh, this project also the dependent injection helps to do the unit test very easily uh, for the MVC and any other project so let's go ahead and uh, see what we have it in the MVC 6 so MVC 6 already comes with um, dependent injection by default they're providing it so if you see this configure service in this method so we already see something called add transient which is actually initiating the injecting the object uh, add message hand, message sender uh, which reference I email sender as a interface so they this is already initiating this object using this independent injection concept so in this if you dot you see there are four of them or four of them they have let's do this add something called singleton add scooped add and uh, add transient and there is one more called add instance so there are four uh, kind of um, way to we initiate the dip dependent injection so let's let's create our own um, interface and implementation and see how it will work so I'm going to create a new interface called I stop details. Okay. And then here we're gonna declare string first name. Sorry about my key. String first name get and string last name get and we're gonna write one method called string and get full name. Right here, we're gonna send return first name plus last name. All right, so it is called um, public interface. Okay. 
Google Chrome, so what I'm going to say. Sorry, so I was a keep writing. Sorry about it. I'm implementing all the annoying. Okay, so we have um, uh, first name, last name, and get full name. There are two, uh, one method and two properties in the interface. So we are going to enter, implement this in our another class file, add new item class stuff details. Here we're going to get I stuff details and we're gonna uh, implement that so one option is you can click this but it will create some um, extra helpful for us so let's do Do the same stuff. Last name. Here we are going to return first name plus in this case plus last name. All right. So our um, uh, so interface are implemented. So now we're going to add uh, inject this class. So let's go to the staff startup, and here we're going to add service dot add mentioned and we're gonna say i stuff details comma stuff details that's it we are already stuff details so in the next tutorial we'll go through how we can implement artifact or any other dependent injection so since we are already giving default uh, dependent injection so we we'll just start to use it and see how it works Let's do that. So this is done. So the, let's see. Well, in the real, let's let's integrate in a view and see how it works. Let's go to index uh, controller. Home controller. Here we can in the constructor. We're going to call. I, I stuff Then we can be called here I stuff details. All right, um, let's see, you can go see equal to stuff. That's it. This get injected hopefully. So let's take this and in the index page we're gonna send this to view data. Name equal to the view dot
up. Plus name. Equal to John. Uh, sweet only. So yes, there is one thing we should do. Since we had a zip get set, so let's let's make it set for now. So we'll fix this issue quickly. Or we can do something. We can say private set. Uh, for now, just keep the set there. Alright, so here we're going to display get full name. That's it. So the name should have that value. Uh, we haven't run this application. Let's run this. Not sure what will happen. We're running this for first time uh, from this is me taking some time to do show that data. While it's loading, you'll go to the start.cs and we'll see what are the other dependent injection they're doing. So if you see that um, add MVC, there are so many methods they added uh, to make it. Uh, this one helps for to MVC to add some kind of functionality you're doing for MVC. I think the page is open already. Okay, it's working. So let's go ahead and display, stop this. And uh, let's let's display our full name and see whether it's working or not in index page. I'm going to display here at view data. Name. Let's run this.
while it's loading. Let's uh, take a look at startup again. And um, all right, so Chris jumped. So it worked. So this is pretty very easy to implement dependent injection in MVC six. So we are we don't need to do a lot of integration of adding those files, this PL and um, to uh, to do the startup code like a container code. So it's all already already done. So we just need to create interface and implementation in the startup code. Just um, service that add trends.